All right, so I pulled the Merc up over here uh, last night so it could be nice and ice cold, and it's finally my Christmas vacation, so I've got a long-ass weekend followed by another long-ass weekend. So I'm hoping that today, this morning, I can get in here and do the glow plugs. For some reason, it this feels like a like monumental task to me in the back of my head. This happens to me for a while if I have something on my list for way too long, but it's a dirt simple. And I mean, there's like literally... Other than like snapping a terminal off of a glow plug wire, which I could just solder a new one back on, there's really nothing to go wrong. It's just like two, three different size wrenches and a reamer. And if I'm lucky and everything goes perfectly according to plan, it shouldn't take but an hour. Uh, even if I have to pull the injector lines and then I just have to bleed them after that. So I don't know what I'm getting like hung up about. So I'm just going to dive right into it and hope for the best. Okie dokie. So this is what I've got. So I've got five new glow plugs. I don't think all of mine are bad, but I just bought five because if I'm going to go through this effort, might as well buy them all. Uh, the hardest one's probably going to be the one that's most burnt out. Uh, and then I also have this um, pre-chamber reamer that I got from Lerms Customs. So we will use that to ream out the extra carbon, and uh, hopefully um, this should all just go swimmingly. Uh, I noticed that I bought all five of these from Rock Auto in one order from one, you know, seller and I got two different packages and the part number reads mostly the same but I don't know if this last set of digits is supposed to be the same or not I mean that says 955 there and that says 955 there the only difference is like EAF versus 4FS so I actually don't know if these are the same they're still sealed so I don't think they're counterfeit they all say made in France they all got the little Bosch sticker but I'm wondering if these might be different because I mean that picture's different than that picture they feel the same length so i'm just gonna pop those open real quick and make sure and uh because i would rather not you know be in a no start condition right here after i've already worked up the patience and have the time to do this okay well they all appear to be the same the only difference is that these guys have a 100 something stamped over here on them 106 i think the one of them has like a one slightly different 10 number and this one has a 659 stamped on it. So not really certain what that means, or 658. They look identical. The only one that is really different is this other kind of grab bag box one. I'm guessing these are more modern plugs. Because this one, instead of being stamped, is like laser etched. But it looks identical. So we're just gonna run with it. Because even if they're not Bosch plugs, I'm sure they work. Um, and uh, I don't really care. So anyway, let me show you exactly what this job entails. It's it's kind of a, a tedious, maybe pain in the ass kind of thing, but it's not hard. It's just an eight millimeter bolt, pop the wire off, and then a 12 millimeter, um, sorry, eight millimeter nut, pop the wire off, and then a 12 millimeter glow plug, and you just back that out. And then you run the reamer in, pull the reamer out, clean the reamer, re-grease the reamer, Put new glow plug in, clean up the wire, put the wire on, put the nut on, and you're good to go. You just re rinse and repeat. The only thing that makes it tedious is that they're buried down in here. And that guy back in there is going to be the hard one. Mostly just to get the glow plug in and out and get the reamer in. But I think it's doable. And pulling the injector lines is not really going to help me there because I have all this other stuff in the way. Um... This guy is definitely in the way, but I was able to just kind of pull it up here and hook it on this stud on the um, oil filter housing. And I'm hoping I can just do all of this without dropping um, the nuts back, back down in there behind the injector, because that will be fun to fish out. Also, it's like 40-something out right now, and my hands are frozen, and there's a stick jammed into this one. However, to procrastinate just a little bit more, uh, I really don't want to pull these injector lines. It makes the job easier, but it's just more work, um, and then I have to bleed them and all that stuff. So I'm going to try and do this without that. Hardest part is just going to be breaking the torque, probably, and so long as these studs aren't so crusty that I can't back them off by hand, it should be just fine. And I'm not playing around. Um, I, I will make this come off. We've got two flexible extensions and four wobbly doos. So I think I can get this just about anywhere into anywhere and break the torque free on those nuts and then break the torque free on those, uh, 
Whatchahoos. Glow plugs. So I'm going to shut up and do this now. All right. I don't know how long that took me, but we got one glow plug out, and that was what I thought was going to be the easiest one. Um, eight millimeter didn't really fight, but the glow plug was kind of just a little bit stuck in the block. So that got a little scary there for a second, but we got it out. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to ream the chamber. And uh, depending on how the chamber looks, I don't know whether or not I'm going to do the rest of them. Um, I think I'm going to run out of patience and I'm going to have to pull these injector lines. Um, I think I'm going to do this far back one here uh, next just to see where my patience level is at. Because I know I'm not going to have the patience to do that after doing the other four. So we're going to do that now while I'm fresh and I still have hand strength. And we'll see if we can get that one out. Um, I think it's going to mainly be a matter of whether or not I can break the torque on the glow plug as to whether or not that comes out. So I think I actually, I think if I take the accelerator linkage off, I'll have enough room to get down here and, you know, just put my grubby mitts on things. Actually, I think I'll have a pretty fair amount of room. So I'll do that. We'll see how that goes. I think that one is probably going to be the worst out of everything, actually. Um, that one's probably going to be pretty easy, except I won't be able to get a socket on there, I don't think. I have to use a deep well, by the way. Um, this one is going to be kind of a pain in the ass with these injector hard lines. I think that's probably going to be the easiest to break the torque on. That one is probably going to be the hardest to actually get out because this guy is right in the way of it. Uh, so we will see, uh, but I will keep going and uh, let's ream that first. All right, so that reamed out just fine. Uh, lots of crud in there. It hit like a lip and then it went and then went right on in and I was able to mostly thread it in by hand. I had to give it like once every turn, I had to give it just a little bump or maybe every three turns or so, but yeah, it's a lot of carbon. So good thing we're doing this. Um, also this plug I pulled out, it is German made, Beru brand, never heard of them. Um, seems to be still in good shape, It's not burnt out or anything. So we will definitely save on that. It looks to be a good unit. So I think the glow plugs are still mostly functional. I think I might have one that's bad, or at least it's not working correctly. And I think the chambers are just full of carbon, so it just takes forever for them to heat up. So anywho, we will throw in a new one. I think I'm going to put in the kind of iffy looking one up here in the front because I know I can get this one out at least. And uh, then that way, if it turns out that this one is counterfeit or a piece of junk, I should be able to mostly easily get it out of here. All right, well, we got the rear glow plug out and I made a quick diversion to pull all of the eight millimeter bolts off of all the remaining four. And then I also broke the torque free on all of the remaining four. So I know that I'm not, I don't have a stuck glow, glow plug and I don't have to pull the injector lines, hopefully. So the most tedious thing about this is just backing this out because it just fights you most of the way, probably because of all the carbon. So I'm hoping at the very least, I should be able to get, you know, the reamer down in here without a whole bunch of fight. This, I think that one and that one have the least amount of clearance. That one is going to be the hardest to get stuff out of because I have pretty much no finger room. Um, this one here in the middle is actually really easy. Um, that one actually has plenty of finger room. Um, and yeah, I did take the main throttle linkage off going to the firewall and I also popped this guy off. I took the E-clip off the back and then pulled it out and just draped it over here and I popped this ball joint off of it. And that gives me oh so much more room and I can pop this injector overflow line out of the way and I can pop these out of the loom. You can really get down in there. So yeah, uh, let us start the reaming and the uh, reintroduction of new glow plugs. All right, so that's that one reamed out and it's pretty scrody as well. Uh, the glow plugs themselves don't actually look bad, so I think the reaming is going to help more than the new glow plugs, if I'm being honest. So, these all look fine. They don't look burnt. Um, so we'll see if one of them is OEM or not. Um, I have no idea if these barrows are OEM or not. I don't think they are because they just look great. Um, so, yeah, clean that off and keep on going. All right, there's cylinder two done. Three down, two to go. Well, here's something interesting. This is cylinder three, and it's clean. 
there's no carbon on the tip, like, at all. And I reamed it out. That's all that came off of there. And that glow plug came out by hand. Like, I, I, hit it, I had to break the torque, but once the torque was out, I just spun the whole thing out by hand, spun the reamer in all the way to the bottom by hand, backed it out by hand, and I'm going to see if I can just spin a new glow plug in by hand. Um, so that tells me that either that was the only one that was functioning, or it was, so far has been the only one that was not functioning, but I think the I don't know whether the carbon buildup means that it's working and it just builds up carbon over time, or if the lack of carbon buildup means that it's not working and it is, uh, you know, not carbonating things. I'm going to assume that that one was the one that was working, or at least working the best. Yeah, this I'm just threading this whole thing in by hand, like the whole damn way. Yeah, see, that's seated. Watch, it'll probably be a, not even a quarter of a turn to torque it. Yeah, there it is. So, interesting. This one's also probably the easiest so far. So, oop, did that backwards. Just, that's all the torque I'm giving it. It's probably 20 foot-pounds. Yeah, so... Intriguing. Oh no. Oh, I see it. Thank the Lord. Any aspiring mechanics out here, don't buy one of these Mercedes that you pulled out of a tree row. Also, buy yourself a, a magnet boy. That should be like purchase number two. It should be like a full metric SAE wrench set and an extendo magnet boy. Those should be like the two things you buy. And third is like a headlight. And uh, that'll get you most places. Oh, probably get some screwdrivers too. And a pair of needle nose pliers. And some vice grips. Maybe just the a crescent wrench, vice grips, and a magnet clicky boy. That'll probably get you 90% of the way. Well, there's cylinder number four. Same as the other four. All right. It's all back together. And I even managed to fix the throttle linkages. So that's nice. I just adjust, I gave this two turns, this three turns, and then there's an adjustment thing here that wasn't bottomed out and I pulled it all the way forward and it's perfect now. It just kisses. All right, we'll give her one glow plug and we'll see if it starts. If I remember to put the key in my pocket. Okay, found the key. It's the funny one. There it goes. We'll give her the 15 seconds. You can see she's stone cold. Block is probably 40, 45 degrees. And we'll see if it just cheeches. All right, click. No accelerator pedal. Holy shit. Holy fuck. Oh man. No cold blow by. All right. Let's go see how it performs. Full accelerator pedal now. All right. Catch you back later. All right. It's the end of the road. We're off the pine straw. I just put her in park and then reverse and back into drive, so we should be in first. Let's see what her 0 to 60 is. is pegged out at nine. I think that's the factory wastegate. Bam. I think that's markedly improved. And we're only hovering at 25 grand. All right, calm her down. 
she she seems to cruise just fine at 50 you get a little bit too high and I get a lot of steering wheel wobble it pulls to the right too um, that wheel over there is kind of making like a ticking noise every rotation so I'm wondering if that bearing might actually be shot or if something is hung up on the brake caliper and it's just hitting every time I don't know what is making it do that she's got some she's got some top-end power I mean, not gonna lie, bottom end is kind of not there, but top end is present. And, you know, by power, I mean relative to all the ill clapped out V6 Dodges I drive. But anywho, I think we finally have a fully functional, reliable car, except for probably the suspension and maybe the drive shaft. So I think I'm going to go work on some more accessory fiddly bits and, uh, then figure out what I need to do, what parts I need to buy for the suspension, uh, get new, uh, get a new transmission mount and a new, um, what you call it, flex joints for the drive shaft, get those in. Uh, that should cut down on all of this drivetrain vibration, some of the parasitic loss, the fact that that guy shivers. And then suspension, I mean, there's like 12 ball joints on the front end of this car and I think there might be two boots between the lot of them. So I've got to do something about that and I'd rather not have to spend like $400 and 30 hours replacing every single ball joint and steering knuckle. So we'll see what I can do about that. I've got some neoprene tape and the grease gun. We might be able to do something that'll, you know, buy us 10,000 miles. We shall see. All right, we made it back. She's not on fire. And as you can see right there, I was able to swing in here and get just a, just a touch of skirt out of it. Uh, we still can't scratch tires, uh, but we might be able to do a donut on wet sand. Uh, one thing I want to check on this guy real quick is blow by. I don't think I've ever really done it hot. I've really only done it cold. So I just want to see whether or not we got the cap doing this or whether it's just kind of like this. Um, also, with the engine mounts having been done, that kind of stabilizes it a little bit. So we're going to pop that open, go grab a shop towel because it's just going to spray diesel oil everywhere, and uh, check on that and just get kind of a rough idea of our, you know, engine health. All right, commence the jiggling. I mean, that could be better, but it could be a lot worse. I think it's more so the engine. Ooh, that's hot. And this is the blow-by. Well, yeah, we'll just say she's kind of mild out. I don't think she's as in good a condition as I originally thought. You know, not, not for 170 on the block. I mean, she's probably in average condition. All right, well, it doesn't appear like we're leaking diesel anywhere, so that's a good sign. Let's see if she'll sing a little bit. Nice. All right, while I waste most of my diesel trying to burn that, uh, I think we will uh, fix these bumpers. So I'm sick of how sad they look and I want my, you know, my bungee cords back. So. It will just do a little bit of a delete on these. And uh, then I think a can of carb cleaner and a roll of double back tape uh, might get us some success. Because uh, she is just about gone. Yeah, she, she ain't on there with much. Alright, so here is the crux of our problem. That's These little tabs are supposed to look like that and they look like that. So this strip affixes itself to the bumper. Uh, it just sort of goes in, locks in, and then it's got two screws that hold each side in place, which for me have completely just snapped the heads off when I went to take them off. And uh, we ain't got no tabs left. Besides a smidge better, and it's also all broken up. So when those tabs give way, the whole bumper just falls off. Because this is just kind of slid right on there. 
So what I'm going to do is take some carb cleaner, a shop towel, and some steel wool, clean this whole front inside of the bumper up, and uh, then we're just going to stick some double back tape, just short little sections right here in between these, smoosh it right back on down in there, and then slide our bumper on, and uh, hopefully that should hold. And I am just going to leave these right where they are as just alignment pegs, because sure... All right, well, there's that. I probably used close to half a roll. Probably should have been a little bit more sparing. Should have just done like little one-inch squares, but whatever, I'm lazy. And about two rolls of this stuff, so I have enough. So now it's just going to be the tricky matter of pulling all the tape off and then having my one shot to go without uh, putting it on like this. So I'm going to attempt to do that, no promises. All right, well, that failed, so... As soon as I started trying to put the rubber on, uh, it just started pulling the thing off of the bumper. And it wasn't that it wasn't sticking to the bumper, it's that this plastic is just old and crody. And so it's kind of like dissolved and flaking off. So the double back tape was giving up the ghost on the plastic. So I th think what I'm going to do now is I just sprayed everything with carb cleaner just to... I uh, used soapy water as well. That's made everything go back on way easier. And I am just gonna like just double back tape the fuck out of this thing. Um, and then hopefully, hopefully it should just stick right on there and I'll have one shot, one shot only. And, uh, and it should stay there or it won't. I don't know, but I can't slide the rubber onto the plastic things while the plastic things are on the bumper. This rubber is just too old. It is just not pliable enough. I'd have to like put it in the oven or something to get it hot enough. So uh, we are just going to just it onto the bumper. And if that doesn't work, I will fucking self tapper this thing to the goddamn bumper. Uh, mark my words, I will do it. We have ways of making you comply. All right, attempt number two, we're on roll number two of tape. So I've got one more try. I would really like to use the rest of this $7 roll of tape for the rear bumper, but uh, if we're lucky, we can just this right on here and uh, not fuck everything up instantly. Wish me luck. All right, she's on, but it's struggling. I just had to go around like this and put like full weight the whole way around to get it to stick to the chrome, which is the opposite of what I was doing last time. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of worried but I think if I just do and do this long enough, I don't know if it's just because it's cold out or if just because this Scott's or Scotch double back tape is just garbage compared to the 3M. I wanted 3M, but they had Scotch at the hardware store. <clears throat> and I ain't driving into town the day before Christmas. I think that's... I'm, I'm just... It's fine. Um, we'll put a fake license plate or something on the front just to make sure that it doesn't like fall off into the road and get run over or I'll put in self tappers on the end I'm probably just gonna self tapper this fucking thing oh man anywho now we're gonna do the back which is not as bad it's really just the corners that are giving up the ghost yeah actually I'm not even gonna touch this yeah, we'll just... Do... Back's fine. Perfect. Fixed. Look at that. Lightning speed. Anywho, done with that. Uh, I think I'm done with this car for today. I think I'm going to shift my attention back to trying to set things on fire. Alright, so to start us off, I think we're going to start working on some aesthetic things, as much as it pains me to do that. I think we're going to clean these carpets. So I bought some carpet cleaner, which we shall use after the fact and on the interior to get rid of the moss. But for now, I think I'm going to take these carpets, go grab my semi-new, not, you know, $20 tiny pressure washer. I think we're going to throw them on my brand new redecked trailer. The trailer's not new. The trailer's like 30 years old, but the deck is new. And uh, pressure wash them there, because that's like the only place I have that's not covered in dirt that I can actually clean them and reach them with the hose. All right. So uh, if you haven't seen it before, that's what we're up against. So this is like actual like living organisms growing on top of it. So I bought some pressure washing fluid. So we shall see how that does. Um, these guys are not going to be too bad. That's the 
you know, passenger floor mat. That was the mat, or passenger carpet. That was the floor mat that was on top of it. Uh, that was the worst. So I'm hoping it should just make some quick work of it. And then a little bit of, let it air dry. Then a little bit of upholstery cleaner. And I think they should just come right back around. I'm not going to clean the under matting because that's pointless. Uh, but I'll get the top, at least. And then we'll see what we can do about the interior carpet. There's not a lot of it, so I'm hoping it should just be pretty simple. All right, so here's the interior. Not the worst up here in the front, but in the back, pretty grungy. You know, just moss literally growing on top of the trans tunnel. I don't know if there's much carpet left there to save, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother cleaning the seats because I'm just going to get seat covers for them, but that's where we only, that's where we have the active moss growing is passenger side because a little bit of a leak in the door. Um, nothing I'm going to be able to do about that or just, you know, get some cleaner in there and hopefully the moss doesn't come back. And yeah, uh, again, I'm not going to touch the seats. I might clean the leather on the back, but I'm just going to cover these things. Uh, they are beyond saving. Okie dokie. So I just did a trial run just to figure out how to use uh, this pressure washer because I've got a foam cannon I've never used and a cleaning solution I've never used and I barely use this pressure washer. So just figuring it out. So I cleaned the three least grungy ones and uh, it's going to be a little bit harder than I thought it was. So we're going to be relying on this foam cannon. I just bought this Zep pressure washer cleaner. No idea if it's safe for carpets or not. Don't really care. Uh, it was just at the hardware store when I was figuring I should buy something. So that's what I got. And I got this, you know, Amazon special foam blaster and some Amazon special, you know, nozzles and this Amazon special Sun Joe. And yeah, uh, foam cannon puts out a lot of foam. I think I might have to, I don't know whether this is a proportioning valve or not. I think I need to fine tune that a little bit. This sucks a lot of pressure out of there. This really just blows foam. It doesn't pressure wash. So what I'm doing is provisionally hitting this just with the adjustable nozzle and just blasting as much gunk off as I can. Then we're hitting it with the foam cannon and we're gonna let that sit for a while and marinate. Then we're gonna come back with this and blow it clean and then we'll let it sit out in the sun and air dry for a little bit unless I think they're pretty close to being done. Then we'll just hit them with the upholstery cleaner after like a thorough ring outing and uh, see if we can scrub them clean, but they're looking fairly decent. So I'm hoping this foam is going to penetrate and get a lot of this junk out. Um, so we shall see. But anywho, I'm going to throw you up here, do a little time lapse, and we are going to just hit this nasty bugger right here, as well as the driver's side mat, and uh, you'll get to see how well this works or not. Alrighty. Sorry about the camera angle. It's about the best I can do with the slope and the trailer and whatnot and having foot room to work on this stuff but um yeah i guess let's quit pussyfooting around and get to it <laughs>
All right, well there they are after just a pressure washing. Those came right back around. Um, still got to clean the foam out of those, but I think I'm going to do that, and then I think I'm going to foam everything, and then I'll may do two cycles of foam. Yeah, maybe just one. It all depends. But, yeah, that's uh, about as good as I could hope. There was something, like, made of metal, like, rusted to there. I picked off flakes of rust that were, like, glued to it, so I don't know what that was about. But we'll just keep on at it. All right, well, those have been foamed, so... Guess I'll let them sit for uh, half an hour or so, and then we'll rinse them out. Um, just give them a, just hit them once again with the pressure washer. Then I think I'll let them air dry, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll scrub them again, and then let them air dry again. All right, that's about as clean as they're gonna get for now. Much better than they were. Um, that stuff is like mold or something. It is not coming out. So I'm gonna go get the upholstery cleaner and just see if I can do anything with it. And if it looks like I'm not going to be able to put any kind of dent in it, then we'll just let it bake in the sun and then we'll do it on the later date. But if it looks like it's working, then I'll come over and I'll hit that guy and that guy and some of this and those little spots right there. But considering the amount of grime I'm going to track into this car, I think that's pretty good for the time being. You know, let's not fool anybody. All right, so I just kind of came in here and gave everything a dry scrub, except for the wet stuff. I used a cloth for that just to you know try and avoid making my life any harder than it has to be and uh, most of the chunks just kind of came off with this sort of white you know fungal film that I'm sure will give me some sort of horrid disease but came off and uh, we're just gonna hit it with the upholstery cleaner and uh, just hope for the best it says give it about you know a minute to really kind of just soak in and then scrub it off and vacuum dry. So this will be the trial run. If I can figure out how to jam it in here. This is going to be the fun part. I think I can take this off and work on it. But anywho, I'll get to that. Try not to get it everywhere. Hard to do this one-handed with the wrong hand. And uh, i got to come clean with you guys. I don't know if I've said this before or not, but this car, like, doesn't smell at all. It smells like a broom closet, and that's about it. Like, no gross, no nast, no funk like nothing like it's not great you know if you're you know you bought a new car and it smelled like this you'd probably be kind of upset but like in no way shape and form does this car have a stench so yeah it's just kind of just i don't know how to describe it. it smells like a closet like a janitor's closet except minus all the cleaning chemicals Okie dokie, just a little bit of elbow grease, and that's better. I'm not gonna say it's good by any means, but it's, it's good enough for me. I don't think I'm gonna put in any more effort. We're just gonna throw in car mats and call it a day, plus I haven't really fixed the rain leak, so no use gussying up too much. So I think I'm gonna go do the driver's side, and uh, that'll be it. All right, there's the driver's side. Not as marked an improvement, but an improvement nonetheless, so we'll take it. It just, it matches the whole terrible lookingness of the whole thing, so uh, I, I don't know, my hands are bleeding enough from slamming my split knuckle into corners that uh, I think I'm done for this weekend. Um, maybe one day if I get like a super suction vacuum thing, we'll come back and hit it, and that'll probably do a lot of the work, but I think... I think we'll just let it air dry and, you know, just settle for not having exposed, you know, organisms. All right, so these have been drip drying for a minute. So let's see what this does to whatever this horrid biotic material is. And uh, if it works on this one, then we'll hit that one and that. And uh, we'll see if we can get this last little bit out of here. So here goes nothing. All right. That's been done. Let me go grab a towel, and uh, we'll see if that worked. I don't think it did anything. I don't know what that shit is, but it is... It's part of the carpet now. I got some of it out, but not a lot. Huh. Okay, well, I guess we're ignoring that, too. hey you. I may or may not have forgotten to film an outro or two or three. So, this is the outro. 
So if you like what I'm doing here, go down there, like the video, comment, tell me what else you want me to see due, due to this pile of shit. I can't promise that I'm going to have any motivation to do any of it, but I'll at least maybe read it, potentially. And uh, if you want to see the rest of the series and uh, see me eventually drive this stupid thing to a place and then back home to use this automobile as a means of personal conveyance, what a radical idea. Go down there and smash that subscribe button. And until next time, Tom Allen.